Uh, anybody got a good song to start us off with? This little light of mine, because I, I sure make sure I let it shine. Well, let's let it shine then. Shine, shine, shine. <laughs> Amen. Amen. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Yes, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. My God gave it to me. I'm gonna let it, oh, my God gave it to me. And I'm gonna let it shine. My God gave it to me. And I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine In my neighborhood I'm gonna let it shine In my neighborhood I'm gonna let it shine In my neighborhood I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it, yes, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Father in heaven, we want to thank you, Father, for allowing us to be here once again. Father, to partake in this, uh, uh, this scripture, this Bible study, Father God, this feeding of our spirit. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to be here. and We're asking that you would open up your word to us, Father, that we may gain understanding. Father God, we're praying for trial and grace for those that are still making it this way. Thank you for those that have make, made it here already, Father God. And Father, we just ask that you would just continue to speak to us yeah. through this word, Father God. Thank you for the Bible studies we've had and, and all the conversations and the edifying um, conversations we've had, Father. We just want to say thank you. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would continue to move in this place. Father God, give us understanding as we receive your word. We thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, I hope everyone had a great day today. It was a beautiful day outside. The weather was great. Not too hot. Good weather. Good weather. And we pray to continue to have some good weather. No rain. It's been pretty cool. It's not been too hot out there. Uh, this evening we are still in 1 Kings and we are um, studying Elijah. Elijah, I think we're in 1 Kings 18. No, 19. 19. We moved on. Thank you, Pastor Wesley. We moved on to 19. Let's see. All right, here we go. So in chapter 18, we saw that Elijah uh, was at the end of it. He prayed for rain. Even though God told him it was going to rain, he still prayed for rain. So when God gives us a, um, a vision or a dream of something that's about to happen, we still must pray for it. We still must pray for it. Now, we're going to see that Elijah is going to flee to Sinai. After God has done so much for Elijah, um, he's still going to have some fear of Jezebel, after what Jezebel is saying. And it's easy for us to say, man, Elijah, how could you do that? God just blessed you. How could you do that? But we sometimes do that, too. Yeah. God just brought us through something, and then something else comes up, and it's, oh, man, oh, well, God just brought you through something. There's nothing too hard for God, no matter what it may be. Amen. So uh, we're going to see that Elijah is going to um, start feeling a little frightened about Jezebel, but then God is going to come through once again. Once again. Amen. Yes. Does somebody else want to have something? 
Pastor Terry? All right. Oh, I'll, just, I'll just agree with you, Pastor, that sometimes yes. we have our weary moments, and yes. sometimes we have the fear that kick in. That's why it's important that we surround ourselves around other believers. That's right. To, That's to right. give us encouraging words. Encouraging words to encourage one another, to let everyone know that everything will be all right. Amen. Amen. All right, so we got to go. Bless you. We're going to start with, uh, we're in 1 Kings chapter 19. Give everybody a chance to get there. 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. And I'm going to go ahead and we may, this is a pretty short chapter. We may be able to get to the uh, the other chapter also, uh, chapter really 20. Long. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's see. So the title that it has here for King James, it says, Elijah flees from Jezebel. New King James Version says Elijah flees to Horeb. Uh, the NLT says Elijah flees to Sinai. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started and see where Elijah fled to. I'm going to start off and I'll read verses 1 through 9. Verses 1 through 9. Amen. When Ahab got home, he told Jezebel everything Elijah had done including the way he, he, he had killed all the prophets of Baal. So Jezebel sent this message to Elijah. May the God strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you killed them. Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Beersheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servant there. Then he went on alone into the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, for I am no better than, than my ancestors who have already died. Then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. But as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and told him, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there beside his head was some bread baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Then the angel of the Lord came again and touched him and said, Get up and eat some more, or the journey ahead will be too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank, and the food gave him enough strength to travel 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. There he came to a cave where he spent the night. Amen. Well, it's a good way to start it off. Elijah just saw the power of God on display, and he ended up killing all of the prophets of Baal, and just all the power, you see all the power of God, and then now Jezebel says something that frightens him, that, that he's afraid of. So now he's ready to just give it up. Lord, just take me. Lord, just take me. And as I said, y'all, sometimes we've been uh, to some degree there. You know, just, just like frustrated, just, you know, Lord, you know, I'm just tired, Lord, you know, just tired. We've been that place, but we see that God always answers prayer, always answers prayer. Even though we go through our tough times and our times uh, feeling, like, feeling like giving up, God is still there for us. All we have to do is get on our knees and pray. Amen. Pray, God will answer your prayer. So he was afraid, he was running for his life, and then he went under a solitary broom tree, and then as he lay down and slept, an angel of the Lord came to him. Oh, some people don't believe in angels. They said, oh, no, no, I don't believe in angels. And this is right here. It's showing you that an angel of the Lord came to him. Do you all know that angels still come around? Amen. Do you all know that there's still angels? Oh, amen. amen. You know, sometimes we, the Bible says, be careful how you entertain strangers because you may be entertaining angels amen. unawares. There are angels around us. Amen. amen. And sometimes they can... Uh, uh, come across as a, a, a human. They can come across as different things. They come across and, and uh, sometimes we, sometimes the Lord will allow us to see it. He'll allow us to see them and sometimes there are angels. There are angels right now in this place. Amen. We don't see them, but they're here. Amen. They're here. Yes, Pastor Wesley. I was in Walmart a couple weeks ago because my laptop blew out by the electric car yeah. we had. And then so I went into Walmart to check out the laptop and uh, this lady walks up to me she said, sir, you got $2? I said, no, I ain't got no $2. And kept doing what I was doing. As I walked away, same scripture came to me. 
Kim, he might be in ten and Angel. Mm -hmm. Turn that back around and found two dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Gave him two dollars. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Never know, y'all. <laughs> yeah. But y'all, one time I was going to, uh, I was with some uh, guys. We were riding our motorcycles to, to Brenham. And we were at Kelly's. We were all just kind of waiting for, it was me and Jerome Stinson was sitting there on our motorcycles and we were waiting for some other people to come. And all of a sudden, this man just out of nowhere, I don't know where that man came from, he just showed up and he walked by us. He had white, white hair, you know? And he was just, a, 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 just had a jolly look on his face, just real nice, you know? And he says, oh, where are you guys going? And we were like, well, we're waiting for some friends. We're getting ready to drive our motorcycles up to, to Brenham. He says, okay, well, y'all have a good time. Have a great time. And just the way he said it was just wonderful. So, you know, as he walked along, Jerome and I just kept talking. We looked up and the man was gone. It's like he just disappeared. And we looked at each other again. We're like, okay. We didn't say anything else. Like, okay. But you got to be careful. You don't know. He could have been an angel right there. But he, he left such kind words that we just felt good. Just, just felt good. So I'm sure that we've all had some type of case. Uh, some type of instance like that. Oh, this microphone's going out. Some type of situation like that that may have happened. Does anyone else have any other stories that, that you've had like that, Mr. Dwayne? Yeah, I wasn't going to mention it, but I ran to the same little man with white, white hair oh. in Dickinson Highway 3 at AutoZone. I'll never forget it. My uh, goodness. I was stopping there to get a battery, and my truck was parked there. And he said, man, what kind of truck set you got there? I said, just the GMC Sierra. It's a nice little GMC you got there. Yeah. Got a V8 engine on it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, I looked up on my left shoulder and I looked back. He was sitting in his car talking out to me in his, in his truck. He had a smaller truck. He was gone. Uh -huh. Vanished. Yep. I looked in every direction. Mm -hmm. No truck, no him, no nothing. Mm -hmm. Little old white man. Yep, that's the same thing. White hair. Yeah, with white hair. He, not about that yeah. tall, something like that, but he had white, white hair. Yes. But his skin, everything on him just looked pure like you know yeah, just like look perfect, yeah like perfect yeah. you know and then his yeah, smile was just more. just yeah. a smile you know just a, an awesome wonderful smile well you scared me i don't want to talk to you <laughs> no nah, you know we feel good you yeah. feel good when he came around okay, that's yeah, his voice was once a piece though yes it was yeah. one other time that i was in the san antonio <clears throat> and that time i was on drugs and stuff and i walked along this street called hackberry and i was looking for a friend of mine because i had ran from uh, austin texas and to San Antonio. So I'm walking and looking for a friend of mine and this guy walks up to me and says, hey, you want to get off of drugs? Take this fly and go to this place. Mm -hmm. I've never seen that person again. Never <laughs> seen him again. Wow. Never seen. And the place was real. The place was there. And I stayed there four years. That's why I'm in ministry now. But I stayed there four years. But I've never seen this person again in life. My Lord, my Lord. See y'all, and the, I believe, I believe that the angels and God still sends angels around us to comfort and uh, maybe just give us some kind words of encouragement, just different things like that. But there's so many more that we don't even see. You know, the wrecks and accidents that we could have had on the way here or wherever he had, uh, God sent he dispatches angels to protect us and to, to uh, cause things to stop or, or, or different things like that. They can maneuver different things. I also believe that the angels also can control the weather. I think like hurricanes, different things that were supposed to come this way, they've been stirred, steered a different direction. I believe that that happens also. Amen. Does anybody else want to have anything else to say on that? And I believe you use humans too as an angel too as well. But you know, some of the kind deeds that you hear in testimonies that people have done, they, they have angel-like uh, characteristics, mm -hmm. behavior, yes. attributes. Yeah, it made me think of, remember a couple of weeks ago, the little four-year-old, maybe he was three, he was in the woods. Well, yes. he was, they found him like three days later. Yes. And I'm like, how did that happen? Mm -hmm. It had to be he was in the woods for like three oh, days oh a little three four year old child and came out with nothing I mean he didn't have any ish, any marks or anything like that nothing happened to him I believe that was angels I believe the angels watched over him amen amen all right well y'all we're gonna move on let's go uh, yes mm-hmm Yeah. On a, in verse uh, three, no, let's go down. Uh, verse four. Mm -hmm. He said, "Then he went on alone into 
the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. Mm -hmm. See, and this is what, I, what I'm looking at here when I was studying it this evening. I found a lot of people wish to die when they get discouraged. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Christians. Mm -hmm. Get discouraged, because I preached a message years ago because some people, you know, Christians shouldn't get discouraged. We do get discouraged. Yes. We get frustrated because mm -hmm. we're human. And some of us do say, well, I'm just giving up because it happened to me. Mm -hmm. It happened to me. I didn't want to do nothing no more. I didn't want to, I didn't want to minister no more. Matter of fact, I stopped ministering. Mm -hmm. I got so discouraged and I became depressed. And I found a lot of Christians do become that's depressed, right. Right. become depressed. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it's the negative things that's all around you. Yes. Although you be trying to uh, ignore them or fight them off and read the word, but they they did it coming at you, mm -hmm. and sometimes they overwhelm you. And yes. that's what what Elijah was saying. I had enough. I had, yes. I, I have enough. I had enough. Mm -hmm. Because Jezebel was saying, "Okay, I'm going to do to you what you did to to yes, the, to." Exactly the, like a gangster. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And see, you know, that could put, that could put, as a human flesh, could put fear. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he ran. Mm -hmm. He ran, you know, for his life. Yes. And all the stuff that God used him for, that that that, that went out the window. He didn't that's think right. about that. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. And that's why a lot of things that God brought us through, like you were saying, the person, or uh, you know, God deliver you from this, and then something else happened to you, mm -hmm. and you get afraid. I'm gonna say, like, He deliver you from. Uh, from arthritis, then all of a sudden the doctor tell you you got cancer. Mm -hmm. That fear. Yes. You begin one, and that's why a lot of believers do that's get right. discouraged mm -hmm. and frustrated. And this is what what uh, Jezebel was doing. And you find a lot of people. The devil used a lot of people to make people discouraged and frustrated, and also they can stop believing in God and stop mm -hmm. trusting in God. Giving up. And this is the same thing happening a lot. Sometimes uh, it's not necessary that uh, the devil at times, you can just grow weary in just doing what God has called you to mm -hmm. and want to give up uh, mm -hmm. because you become just worn, yes. worn down. And, you know, uh, sometimes the frustration, uh, you as a pastor having to deal with your flock, sometimes that can weigh you down, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you get to a place where you can get discouraged because you got members not doing what they're supposed to be mm -hmm. doing. and. So I can understand uh, Elijah's frustration because yes. uh, he was doing doing the right thing, doing what God called him to. And us as believers, we can get to that place as well. Yes, mm -hmm. even when you're doing the work of the Lord, yes. you can get tired. Yeah, you, you can, can get, get exhausted and frustrated. Yes. And you can have everything going on right at the church, and you got your, you have your family that bring you so much burden, and your, your mm -hmm. children wayward. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Amen. Imagine you had to end up. Uh, the, the, yeah, the, the, this is a prime example of um, suicidal. Mm -hmm. When you get to that point, That's right. mm -hmm. you, and a lot of uh, people think because uh, people are Christians, uh, mm -hmm. they should not have that weight on them. But it's real. Mm -hmm. it's so, mm -hmm. so, so yeah. suicidal. And uh, I've heard people say that you have to look for signs of uh, of people, but sometimes that's not going to be a sign. Not a sign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I know personally, because when I was 20, I was pregnant with my oldest daughter. I was eight months, and I attempted suicide. They took me grades over at UTMB mm -hmm. back in the day, grades. Mm -hmm. And um, they told my mom if uh, I didn't, I guess, come around, they would ship me to Austin. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's, it's very real. But the last thing that happens in a person's life it's not all the overwhelming factor. It's all the other things that's behind. Mm -hmm. Like a two-two train, it just derails all the other things, y'all. You know, it's not just this one instance, but this one last instance could be the one brings the person to break it finally. Break. Mm -hmm. It's the other 20 things when they were five and mm -hmm. the dad sitting them in a corner, they didn't have any food, mama slapped them, and all the other things of life. Mm -hmm. It just overwhelms them all, and then boom, you come to that point like, no, no more of this. No more of all of this. I'm, I'm out of here. I just want to get out of here. I want to, mm -hmm. So that's that's yeah. what happens in the moment of someone personally, and that's what happened to me mm -hmm. and other people that come to that decision that I, I you know, it's no use. I, what's the use of going on? Mm -hmm. So for him to get picked up 
uh, for angels to share with is a, is a good thing. So I think the church don't talk about that kind of stuff. They don't. So people don't feel like they can talk about it. It's taboo. Yeah. 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 So you got people hurting in the church. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, it's, it's so good to. Sometimes I know pastor can't always answer the phone, but they can have somebody that's designated because somebody can call and say, Pastor, I need to talk, well, I can't talk to you right now. Get back with me on a uh, make schedule with my secretary. Mm -hmm. It's Monday they're trying to get to you, but Friday, Friday, you know, they, they see you. I see you by Friday. Well, a person can be suicide by then. Because mm -hmm. they just need to just, you know, you can just listen for one minute to say, okay, well, mm -hmm. you know what, let me, I'm going to get sister so and so to call you back. Uh, to let me mm -hmm. get your number or whatever. Let me, I'm going to get them to call you back. Mm -hmm. It's good to have somebody else on post. Amen. Because pastors can't do it all, but somebody else can be designated mm -hmm. in that spot. So we won't lose people. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Amen. You know, and you're talking about something that we, I uh, think Dr. J and I both went through at the other church that we were in, and Dwayne too, uh, we were at, and, and this young lady was, was crying out, you know, just going through a whole lot of stuff, a mm -hmm. lot of stuff, and then things would get okay, then they get tough again, they get okay, and then it, that, that's what happened. She ended up uh, taking a life, and that was very, very um, hard. It was hard to see it, you know, because... You you know you you right there with her praying with her and, and, and praying that everything's gonna be okay and then it just over it overtook her. It and overtook I wasn't saved. I wasn't saved at that time at twenty. Uh, I wasn't saved. But I remember when we came up with the name of our church, New Visions of Hope. We put it in the in the uh, uh, the phone book. Mm -hmm. and it, it was in the yellow pages. So this guy waiting on Mark, he was just going through looking for a church that he could cry to. Mm -hmm. And he came across New Visions of Hope. And what made him call? was the hope. No. And that's what yeah. he needed at the moment. Yes. Because we had new pieces of hope in there. He called and answered the phone and he was telling me about what you know, he was putting suicide, he felt like killing himself and I was like, you know, keeping in touch. So I went to my husband, we wrote down so I said, So what's your, so where do you live? What's your address? And I wrote it down, I gave it to my husband. He and my son in law, I said, this he I was writing down, but I was keeping them on the phone. Mm -hmm. So the whole time I'm talking to him, my husband made it over there over the mark in about twenty minutes. Knocked on the door. When I heard him knock on the door, then I, I hung the phone up. Mm -hmm. And that young man is today saved. I've got his name, but he sometimes every now and then call us and just say he remember what that day that he was suicidal. Mm -hmm. Because we had this little thing in the paper, in that phone book, and he was looking for something that would give him my Lord. a way out. My yeah. Lord. Yes, yes. And even just like my uh, was preaching in Galveston today. One of the things I was uh, trying to illustrate to them that just as the, we say the unsinners have all the struggles and problems, a lot of times we as believers, we hide it. So we yeah. want to tend to show yeah. that we don't have struggles and problems. Yeah. Wow. And one of the, the one of the main things that they had was they were actually talking about evangelizing. And, and I heard her say at one point in time that um, uh, uh, somebody said we have to listen. A lot of times we don't listen to people. So what I'm saying is a lot of times when people, uh, when we as Christians are people, we don't listen to people, things begin, because as you were saying that, I, I can relate to that, things begin to pile up. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and actually some people actually be talking to people about their the hurt and pain. Mm -hmm. Oh, they just brush you off. That's number oh, one. Yeah. Uh, oh, girl. Okay. So then you got uh, number two. And then somebody <laughs> come and kick you. Not 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 physically, li literally, but mm -hmm. come kick you with another one. And then you got all these things. And then when I said to myself, okay, now that we, when you go and try to tell somebody that you're feeling all this emotion, you're having all this hurt. Mm -hmm. People are uh, Christians. They'll somewhat put you in a position where they make you feel like, oh, you don't trust the Lord. You oh, don't have yeah. no oh, Okay, yeah. so that's another punch in the gut. Mm -hmm. So at the time, it's yeah. like, then you come to this last breaking point. Right. It doesn't even have to be anything big. Right. It's it something don't. little. I can't get my washing machine to work. That's it. That's Not somebody right. to cut the, I mean, they just slip their drug in the huh? It is that little bitty thing. Then somebody say, well, she was frustrated about that, but they don't realize that it was all those things before. Yes. Right. And then, mm -hmm. then the person's gone, and everybody want to try to say, why she died or why he died, we really don't know. Mm -hmm. God knows. My Lord. Yes, Pastor. Yeah, you know, just real quickly, uh, everything that we've said, uh, this is what came up in my spirit, and it's uh, even in the, the scripture there. Uh, if Elijah had had one person that he could turn to, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to talk to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because when we're dealing with these things as Christians, mm -hmm. uh, as believers, 
if we had one person that we can turn to and talk to, yes. then when the Bible says to uh, pray for one another mm -hmm. or to comfort one mm -hmm. another, mm -hmm. if you had that one person that that it has a, a listening ear yes. where you can pull out some of these things too, I believe that would relieve a whole lot of what we did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. One yes, yes. I want to share this. This gentleman here, Pastor Terry, and Sister uh, Green's husband, Pastor Green, James Green, mm -hmm. they the one came to me mm -hmm. and talked. Me. Because I didn't have no one else to turn to at the time. Mm -hmm. So I had my wife call them and they came over. I wasn't even looking for them to come, yeah, unexpectedly. But they came over and that, that, that comforted me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. comforted exactly what the pastor and, said. And seeing that, and like you just said, if we have one person uh -huh. we can turn to, mm -hmm. That, 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 that says a lot. That, that can help. Because we, we uh, talk with some song we were singing, that you're not alone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. You're not alone. Because mm -hmm. we can't do it by ourselves. Yeah, you need somebody with true compassion. Right. And that's why the scripture says, comfort me one another uh -huh. in the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, and one time I was going through a, a depressive type state from being sick. And my, my brother-in-law, Calvin, the one that's the mm -hmm. usher, you know, he comes here and and he really wasn't into the word or anything like that, but he just, God just gave him like a comforting spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just something about him that every time he would come around when I was feeling sick and down, he would come by just to talk. And I just felt so much better. So okay. some people have gifts, they don't even realize yeah. it. They exactly. got a gift to be able to help calm or comfort somebody, and then sometimes they don't realize it. That's, that's just something I thought about, and I told him about it, and he started tearing up. And I told him, I said, yeah, I, I mean, I don't want you to feel like that, you know, but you do, man. Mm -hmm. There's something that, about you that I was feeling confident when you would come around. That's good you told me to Yes. Amen. All right, y'all, this is, this is good. Every time we get in the Bible study, boy, we have some good conversations. So, I'm some good. About that She's a yeah, we're about to talk about it a little bit more. All right, let's go. Let's. Uh, the next section says the Lord speaks to Elijah, and that's um, well, it's finishing verse nine, verse nine through uh, eighteen. Someone can read nine through eighteen. That is ten through nineteen. Can you read nine? Well, I read part of nine. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. He entered the cave there and spent the night. Suddenly the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord of armies, but the Israelites have abandoned your covenant, Turn down your, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, mm. and they are looking for me to take my life. Then he said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the Lord's presence. And you said through what, Pastor? Oh, go all the way through uh, 18. Okay. At that moment, the Lord passed by. A great and mighty wind was tearing, tearing at the mountains and was shattering cliffs before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. Hmm. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a voice, hmm. a soft whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? I've been very zealous for the Lord, God of armies, he replied. But the Israelites have abandoned your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are looking for me to take my life. Then the Lord said to him, Go and return by the way you came to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you are to anoint Hazael as king over Aram. You are to anoint Jehu son of Nemesis, as king over Israel, and Elisha's son of Sephat from Abimokhah as prophet in your place. Then Jehu will put the, to death whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, and Elisha will put to death whoever escapes the sword of Jehu. But I will leave 7,000 in Israel. Every knee that has not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. 
Amen. Mm. All right. Well, that last part just let us know that you are not alone. We are not alone. There are other brothers and sisters that are there for us. We are there for one another. Amen. That was a powerful message right there. Um, just to go back up to uh, verse 11, when it talks about God, you know, it says uh, the voice was, uh, uh, it says that there was a great strong wind. I'm reading from New King James. Um, strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And then there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And then there was a fire. The Lord was not in the fire, but he was in a still small voice. Uh, when I was reading and researching this, it was saying that sometimes we go looking for God and we want something huge and miraculous and this is all I got to oh, but it's not always like that. God can be in that still soft voice or that still uh, 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 moment or, or that quiet word you just read or something like that. Not always something large. And then it also said when I was reading, it's not always about the size of a church. Sometimes we want to go to a huge church to fill the Lord. The Lord may be in that little small church right. with three or four people there. The Lord may be right there. So we we can't limit God and we can't uh, assume that we know where God is going to be. God can be in different places. So that was one thing. And then I look, I'm going to let you all know you all have a lot to say on this one. But uh, it was talking about God told him who to anoint. He said anoint Haziel as king over Syria. God is using an enemy. He's going to use an enemy person for his own will on behalf of Elijah, on behalf of Israel. But he's going to use him as a punishment. Because Israel has gone wayward. The northern uh, um, uh, Israel, the tribes that went to the north, had the more wicked kings. They had more wicked kings, so they had more consequences and quick, quicker consequences. The uh, kings, the southern kingdom, they had more good kings, but they still had some wicked kings, but they're going to also suffer some consequences also. Uh, but then it says he also anointed um, Jehu as Nimshi is king over Israel. So he got he has anointed a person that wasn't an Israelite. Now he's anointed a person that's the king of the Israelites, and then he's gonna anoint a prophet. God always has things in order. There, there's a way that we don't always know. It may seem mysterious. Well, why, why is he doing this here? But God knows what's best. In our own lives, there are certain things that happen in our lives that we don't understand, but God already has it planned. We just have to trust in him. Amen. And, and, and continue to pray for understanding. Continue to pray, Father, give me strength to make it through. This is what this is telling us right here. God can use anybody. It's called divine providence. We talked about that weeks ago. Divine providence. He can use anybody, anything mm -hmm. on your behalf. Sometimes we don't see it. Amen. We just have to thank God and just continue to pray to the Lord uh, for what he's giving us or what he's trying to show us or what he's telling us. Give us more understanding. And I know we pray that a lot. Father God, I don't, I'm not understanding. Give me some understanding, Father God. Let me know. And I think somebody in, in Sunday school said we don't, we're don't. we not questioning God. We're asking a question. Some, you remember um, yeah, uh, Sister, Karen. Sister, Karen. Sister Karen said that. Yeah. 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 The way she put that, I didn't put it exactly how she put that, but, but that was uh, that was really strong the way she said that. Yeah, she said, we don't, we, we don't, she said, uh, but I had said, you know, you can question God. She said, no, we can't question God, but we can ask Him questions. Yes. We can ask Him why this... Uh, for understanding. For understanding. Mm -hmm. But not quite, not really, you know, uh, why you do this? Uh, why why you let my mother die or something like Almost that? Almost being critical. Yeah. On what God has done. Or criticizing what He's, what he's yeah. done. But we can ask questions for understanding. Yeah. Yeah, I like the way she put that. All right, y'all, somebody else want to? Because actually, yes. in a sense, even like when you're praying to God, He will answer you in your heart. Mm -hmm. So you get the answer when you're praying to Him. You still get the answer. And also, like what you said was, you use it when you said uh, looking at the Word. Just like when, you, when you're reading the Bible and you're studying the Bible, when you're searching for your answers, the Bible is, is God talking to you. You're, mm -hmm. you're hearing Him there. Yes. That's why it's important that not only do we read his word and study his word and hide his word in our heart, we need to bury it in there deeply. Mm -hmm. And we have to have it in our hearts because it's going to be our compass to, 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 to where we need to go, what we need to know. And it, he, he, you hear him through his word. Amen. Amen. Good, good point. Yeah. Good point. That's I, it. I just wanted to, uh, since we're all talking about that, uh, 
I just want to talk to the part where you said about the three things that occurred with Elijah. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of all of that noise, mm -hmm. notice I said the noise, mm -hmm. the, noise yes. the wind. Sometimes when we're asking God for something, there is so much going on around <laughs> us, we can get to the place where I've asked God, God, why can't you tell me or why am I not hearing from mm -hmm. God? It's because we have too much busyness around us. Yes. yes, yes. And I find that when I, this is just me. Mm -hmm. When I go outside and I'm mowing my lawn mm -hmm. and I'm working the hedges to trim the hedges and stuff, it's in those moments that I've isolated from the basketball, the football, <laughs> everything in the house yeah. or somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's in those moments when it's just me and the Lord then I'll hear from him much clearer than when I'm out there. And you're right, sister, we do hear from the Lord through the word, but I was just relating to Elijah in that still, quiet voice. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you're mm -hmm. right, too. That's when you hear it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's, I keep over here repeating distraction, distraction. Yeah. Even prior to you talking, start talking about distraction. Sometimes we're so busy, we're so consumed. Mm -hmm. And that's just like even us as Christians. We, so, we can get so consumed with you know, making a mighty dollar, uh, you know, uh, 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 running behind our kids and, and, and you know, chasing the, the spouses, you know, so on and so forth. And we never get a chance to hear that small voice. Mm -hmm. But I also tell the Lord. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, like I also tell people, you know, in order to know God's promises, in order to know God's word, you have to crack this open and, 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 yes. and, and, and find out what he's saying to you and know what his promises are. Mm -hmm. And if you say, well, you got a problem going on or sickness, you, you, you say to God, you, you promised. You tell God what he promised. Mm -hmm. You don't say it like arrogantly. You're just like, you know, humbly. Lord God, in your word, you told how Hezekiah, if he yada, yada, yada. You know, you just go on. You just show God his promises. Yes. And then you wait patiently. And a lot of times, like Mr. Peace, he said, well, when Mr. Jolene, you're going over to uh, the church. I said, I'm going early because I, I had a dream last night. And it, and it woke me up. Mm -hmm. And I, I was late. I said, I don't know what God was telling me. I said, but I'm going to leave out of the house a little bit earlier and, and get in front and be there at the church. He said, well, I know somebody who, who's at the church. I can have him open it up. I said, no, 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 no. That's my quiet time. Mm -hmm. Because what it does is give me a chance to meditate and ask God how and what should I expect from this. And leading, you know, you're just urging in the Holy Spirit. And that yes. Because you're listening for that small, quiet voice. And see, I couldn't do that if, if I'm rushing at the last minute. I don't know what it was that God had me was telling me, but I knew what he said was, get there early. Yeah. And and when I got there early, again, it gave me a chance to sit outside the church and meditate. And whatever he gave me, I, I don't know exactly what he gave me. I'm pretty sure I gave it to the people mm -hmm. because I meditated on some things. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay, it must have been something because uh, the youngest person that was at the convention, she came up and she gave a testimony based on something I had said to her. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was that. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Who knows? Yes. God is so amazing and awesome. Yes, oh, he I is. love him. He is something. Yeah, well, I tell you, uh, you were saying to go somewhere where you were not distracted. Mm -hmm. Both of y'all were saying that. So at the school, y'all, and I always talk about school and all the issues we have at Baja. It, it's been it's been something else. So last week, uh, I felt the Lord telling me, I, I go to my office I'm on the first floor. And I usually go in there and pray, you know, before the day gets started. And we have three floors. We have one. Uh, Ball High is the third floor now. So last week, I went up to the third floor. I started uh, thinking about the word of God and how God, Daniel would go up and he would pray. He would face the east. And so I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to do that. So I did that last Thursday or Friday, one of those days. I went up all the way up and I was by myself because I went really early and I prayed, went early. And I prayed. I just felt the Lord was just... I just felt his presence right there. And I'm praying over the school, mm -hmm. not just the building, but the whole of the whole property. Because right. the school is the field house and everything else. Mm -hmm. Just praying for peace in that building. Holy Spirit, move in this place That's and right. give us peace. Move on the staff members and the children in this place. You know, just praying. You know, and so that day was great. It was great. But then Monday, yesterday, I went a little bit later and I should have gone earlier. And when I got up to the third floor, there were already people up there. Mm -hmm. And there were people moving around, talking, and I yeah, couldn't. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I said, oh, man. And, you know, and I, I tried to pray. Well, I didn't want to go right there because they were working in there where I used the room I would go to. I just kind of walked down the hall and kept praying. And then same thing today. I went a little late. So I'm going to start trying to go early when there's no one else up there. And it's, you know, I'm up there by myself just praying. Trying to face the east. I want to try to do exactly what I saw, you know, when I read about Daniel. This is what I want to do. Exactly. Um, 
just you know we just that school and all schools need prayer they, they, they really y'all and y'all the schools need prayer it is really really tough it's really tough every day to hear the language in the hall is the the language is just atrocious there's so much profanity and, and it's, it's just a normal language everybody's using it and all the kids even the ones that you you knew that never used to get in trouble now they're the ones they used it too you know just the craziness and then the, the fighting i had to break up two girls that were about to fight in the cafeteria today while i'm breaking that fight up two boys had a fight all the way down the hall somewhere you know it's just so much it's just so much so we're just gonna i'm just gonna continue to go up to that third floor in the morning now i'm gonna pray amen. i'm gonna pray amen, amen. amen. all right somebody else want to have anything else to add to that okay all right so we are now on verse uh 19 someone finishes off this so the elijah, yeah 19 so elijah went so elijah went from there and found elijah on the south axis uh shafat he was plowing with twelve yokes of oxen, and him and he himself was driving the twelfth pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and my mother goodbye, he said. And then he said, I will come with you. Go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? So Elijah left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He buried the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people. And they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and became his servant. Amen. All right. All right. I want to take y'all back to verse um, 20. The second part of it, though. It says, Elisha left the oxen standing there, ran after Elijah and said to him first, let me go kiss my father and mother goodbye, and then I will go with you. Then this part right here. Elijah replied, go on back, but think about what I have done to you. Think about what I've done to you. Think about the responsibility that you will now have. Um, this reminds me of Jesus telling the two, can you drink of this cup? You know, you want to be this and you want to be that, but can you drink of this cup? To be... Um, Working in the, the Lord's in the kingdom, it's going to take some sacrifice. It's going to take it's going to take some effort. It's going to take some parts to to really be totally surrendered and do what God wants us to do. You got to. It's going to take something, and that's what I think Elijah is trying to tell Elisha: Get ready. And it's not going to be a cakewalk. Right. And, it, and with us, y'all, it's not a cakewalk. But the Lord is with us. The Lord is with us through it all. You know, this weekend. Uh, was such a wonderful time evangelist at your house it was so awesome but you know what really really got to me were the testimonies of the people that, that you all have touched and the, that really that was really just gripping to, to see all that has happened and god has blessed you all to bless other people that was really really powerful and uh that, that was just really uh it's it's awesome seeing testimonies like that to see what the lord has done and what the Lord is using you to do for someone else. Because Pastor Wesley's told me different things. Many of you told me different things that the Lord has used you to help somebody else. It's just powerful. And it's just awesome. Yes. And, and, and I didn't say that, but when I made the statement how God can use humans, and they do angel and characteristic things, I was referring to those testimonies, mm -hmm. my sister. Yes. Because I went home, and those people were so sincere. And let me say something to you if you don't mind me saying it. This wasn't something that you did for a short period of time. Hmm. I mean, these people said that y'all was with them for a long, long time. time. During uh, times of the night where most people won't even ask their phone. Even when they love the Lord. I mean, it just, I mean, the what I heard, it was just so powerful. Yes. I mean, it was just like, oh my God, I'm driving home and I'm like, I'm still seeing this woman <laughs> saying how she, let, let me just say this. This was a woman calling this woman's husband. Yes. And we are I was without, thinking about the same thing. And I'm going to tell you about the women. Mm -hmm. Women don't even want you to sit next to I mean, I'm not like that. I'm not a jealous woman. But there's some women who come with some bad behavior about their men. And they be pastors. And I be like, whoa, sit on down, woman. Don't nobody want it. Not that y'all not want it. You know, <laughs> that, you, know, that, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I can feel comfortable talking to uh, his wife don't run up on me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, but I feel uncomfortable with talking with men because women act so inappropriate yeah. about their husbands. And, it's un and, it, and I got, I stopped feeling a little bit better when I got married because when I was a single minister, it was, you know, it was hard because, you know, I didn't try to get into that. But what I'm saying to you is, 
I went through some stuff being a single minister. And for that woman to say that she would call your husband and, and he ministered to her late hours of the night, and you know what I'm saying? That, that says a lot about you, my sister. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's a pleasure to know you. You know, and, and, and I thought about the same thing, but I saw it as far as Pastor Green having to preach the next day, and he was up, he was on the phone with her for hours and had to preach the next day. Oh my God. That, that says a lot. That, that says a lot. I'm sleep. Oh, okay, I'm going to give you another brownie point. You want to have the ear to the listen. Pastor You know, two points. Uh, you were talking about Elijah and what he said to Elijah, uh, uh, what Elisha said to Elijah about the uh, go and think about the difficult time mm -hmm. and what you're going to have to go through. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm reminded of what Jesus said when he said, uh, uh, if any man puts his hand to the plow and he looks uh -huh. back, yeah. he's not worthy of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's what, when you were reading that and you said what you said, mm -hmm. that's what scripture came to my mind. But based upon what you were just saying, me knowing Pastor Green, that speaks volumes of this. Yes, exactly. I get it. Yes, you know. Oh man. So, uh, and you know, that's the one thing that we as men, and Pastor Bolden, Pastor uh, Fulton, and I talked about that, and Minister Dwayne, <coughs> we talked about that, is that a lot of men today don't have character. Mm. What they have is they have. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's uh, reputation. Mm -hmm. But when you have character, you don't have to worry about things like she don't have to worry about her husband when he's on the phone talking. And I don't about either. No, no woman <laughs> talking to a woman. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and that's character. Thank you. You know, and so when a man has character, his wife don't have to worry about when he's in the face of a woman because she trusts him because of his character. Mm -hmm. Character speaks volumes. Yes. Yeah, character you know? counts. Mm -hmm. Character counts, yes. Yeah, I want to share this what you were saying here in verse 20. It says, go back, but think about what I have done done to you. Mm -hmm. So, and what came to mind to me, when Jesus told the disciples, come follow me, and when you just said earlier, that uh, when we, I almost say, well, when we came in ministry, that it's not going to be hard, it's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. But see, but a lot, of, a lot of people who want to serve the Lord, they fail to discipline themselves. Mm -hmm. They have faith in God's yes. word. Mm -hmm. They want, they want to do ministry, and they want to preach, and they want to do this and that. But they don't want to discipline themselves mm -hmm. or study the word to show themselves approval and to be a character in themselves. Mm -hmm. To be a character, and that's what they don't do. But they want, they want to follow Jesus. Yes. And that's why, I, I think it was, I forget what it was, I think it was in Matthew 1, that uh, a lot of them followed Jesus, but because they wouldn't do that, they went away. Mm -hmm. They fall, they fell away. They went on about their business. And that's why in, in ministry, you can, if you don't discipline yourself, God will discipline you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when he begins to discipline you, you, you want to run, and you want to blame someone else. Mm -hmm. And then you don't want ministry. Mm -hmm. Because that was saying, I'm using myself as an example. Because I had to discipline my 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 mouth, mm -hmm. my attitude. I'm still working on that. <laughs> 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 but you got to discipline. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about uh, also uh, the scripture says the race is not given to the swift or the strong, but to the one yeah. who endures to the end. And I, I'm I'm seeing that as um, sometimes when we first Accept Christ, and we come to church, and we on fire. You know, right. you oh, you know, on fire, but you don't continue to go. You know, and, and, and you you don't endure because you feel that emotion. That it's probably emotion you're feeling. You know, you're on fire, but you gotta. We we gotta truly surrender to God and truly seek Him. Truly, you know, study His Word, and, and you continue to grow. And then it's like a fire that continues to build up in you, and it continues to go. But sometimes we go for the wrong reasons also. I was yeah. thinking of it also. Sometimes it's just for prestige. You know, yeah. sometimes people, you know, look at what, what's, everyone see me, everyone see me, that reputation. type of thing. Reputation. 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 Yeah. But reputation and character and integrity mm -hmm. is different. Yeah. Integrity is something that you do when nobody's watching. Yeah. You're just doing it. Don't worry if nobody sees you or not. You're just doing it. You know, reputation is, you know, sometimes it's, oh, they're watching me. I'm going to do it now. They're watching me. 
And so now you got the reputation for doing the sin. But integrity is when nobody is even watching and you're still doing good for people. Yes. And you don't want you don't want no applause. Yeah, like you don't, you don't, you don't need no pat on the back. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yes. Um, you know, if you ask that, some people, how do you serve God? Well, I go to church, but that's your yeah. service. But God heart is for people. Mm -hmm. Serving people. Yes. It's people and serving people. Yeah. That's what God is about saving those, reaching in there and getting those out from the mm -hmm. clutches of the enemy. That's mm -hmm. really what what we should be about, kingdom minded. But mm -hmm. But I was just going to say this quickly on the back behalf of my husband. Having a prison ministry, and not only a ministry, having a place where you house men and women, uh, that's a hard, uh, I, I can't even, it's not describable to uh, buy buildings and make payments on this to house these kind of people. And then, you know, being a man and a woman, my husband have to trust me because I've been alone with these men, mm -hmm. these killers, and these. We, they stay in the house, and I'm telling you, everybody ain't gonna do that. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't let the ex come here. Okay, what you say? Mm -hmm. Come to their house and sleep in the bedroom down the hallway. It ain't happening. <laughs> but we done it mm -hmm. so more than one time. To mm -hmm. white folks, they, they come in the house in a very nice place or home, and they sleep in the house. But God, you really have to know that this God is God, because yes. otherwise you're not doing it. And then vice versa. When Mary said. Pastor picked her up. He picked her up. Not me. I didn't go pick her up. And brought her to the house. And he took her back home. But I have to trust that and know that I know that I know that God has called us to this type of work. And do we call be called foolish for such a thing? As you trust your wife. And I know what people be thinking. You trust your wife with all these men? I mean, they don't say that, but I know what they're thinking in their mind. Mm -hmm. But that's the call. I don't really think about it. it don't, I'm giving a second thought. It's come with the territory. Mm -hmm. So it's so natural to me. I'm not saying that's for everybody. I mean, I know it's going to fit everybody. But for us, you know, going to the prison, it, even Darrington, mm -hmm. it's about an hour drive to Darrington. I would go by myself when he couldn't go. Mm -hmm. And I'd minister and go home. I mean, but yeah. it's a, it's a, it's wow. a vast call to be called to do that when you're dealing with guys. And I'm in a guy's face. Mm -hmm. and, you know, somebody see me in a guy's face is oh, I don't know Pastor Wayne, I don't know she had that guy's face. But a lot of times when they face a minister to him, mm -hmm. or they call me and say, Miss Green, can I talk to you a minute? Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah, I mean, it's, it goes with that territory. And it's just a call that God got to cover. And uh, I know my husband is extraordinary when it comes to, to those kind of, his heart and soul is in yeah. there. I wasn't in there at first, I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> when he got into that, that wasn't me. I didn't go to the prison. I didn't go to jail. I didn't go none of that. I stayed home. I, but one day I decided I was going to go with him to dad. I'm mm -hmm. you argue that this And when I went with him, I, he let me get up and say something. And from then on, I was in the prison for the next 16 years. Hey Amen. You know what? And that, that's awesome. But sometimes you got people that are friends or family members that will criticize you when you do stuff like that. Man, I wouldn't let nobody stay in my house like that. Man, I wouldn't, you got to hear that stuff. Oh, man, don't take all that. You know, man, no, you, you got that kind of stuff that you got to deal with also, you know, but we got to continue just to continue to do what the Lord tells us to do. There's a song uh, this lady used to sing back at my dad's church at Progressive, and it says, the song has, have I given anything today? Have I helped some needy soul along the way from the dawn to the setting sun? Have I wounded anyone? Shall I reap for what I've done today? Shall I reap for what I've done? That means when I'm doing good, God sees it. God sees it. But when I'm not helping anybody and I'm not doing anything else for anybody, I'm going to church. Like you said, I'm going to church, but I'm not helping nobody. Come on now. God sees that too. Amen. I want to say this with Sister Green was sharing. And I had a guy told me, you know, hey, because we were bringing, you know, women and men. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a, you know, I guess he was very, very high up in the church. I wouldn't do nothing like that. That man crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Man crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But uh, like he was saying, like, my wife, I trust her around men because she she secured me that I was the only one, and I secured her up mm -hmm. that she was the only one. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, I can talk to the women, but she knows that I love the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Lord comes first. Ooh. Oh, man. And, that, and that's that's the difference there. Yeah. See, that's why she said, you know, I trust her, and she trusts me. 
You got to understand that understanding, that mutual understanding. Uh -huh. yeah, he's, yeah. A, see, he's a pastor, I'm an evangelist. Mm -hmm. So I'm going, I mean, I'm out the door somewhere else across town. Or we, I'm all over the place. Mm -hmm. And you got to have that mutual understanding. Yes. He and I do. It doesn't matter what somebody calls and tell you. It don't matter what somebody tells me. It don't, right. it don't even matter. It just don't even matter to me. I like the way he said I love the Lord And she knows I love the Lord That reminds me of Joseph with Potiphar's wife oh, He yeah. said yeah. how could I do this against the Lord yeah. You know And that's the type of man and woman we should be How could I do this against the Lord yeah. He said my God my God, my God. Yeah, my thank God. you, Pastor Terry. He said, oh, yeah. Yes. How can I sin against my, my God, God. Oh, yes. and your husband's house? Yes. Yes. And, and that's just like, I, just like uh, my sister back here. You know, it's like, it's so many, it's like 7.8 billion people. You know, you got so many people on this earth, but at the same time, even if she's an evangelist, I'm an evangelist, we all have a different call and in that role of what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Even though you, you guys was into the prison uh, 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 ministry. But some prison ministries versus other prison ministry ministry, they have their own bylaws or how far they gonna go. So like I said, there's so many people, everybody's willing to do different things. Now are we all serving the Lord? Are we all loving the Lord? Yes, but we all we also acting on our calling. See my, her calling is to deal with that. I mean, it's, it's not, that, I mean, no, yeah, no, 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 at, at, at this moment, I'm saying. Because that's not something I want to, I, I don't want to house me in, you know, because I'd be like, you know, where are they at? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not that I would love them, but I need to know where they're yeah. at, you know. And that's just like yeah. I was telling my sister here earlier today. I said, even with my calling, even if she had a ministry and she asked me to do a certain things, if I knew that wasn't my calling, I'd be on to my sister and say, hey, that's not what I do. Show me what else you have, because there's a lot of work to do in God's house. Mm -hmm. There's plenty yeah. of things to do. There's a much to do. But we all need to be doing something besides sitting in these chairs. We need yes. to be going out there evangelizing, talking to people mm -hmm. and telling them about somebody who can save anybody. Yes. We need to be evangelizing. These chairs are empty. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's because the church is, oh, it is they're not doing what we should. We should we're not doing what we should be doing. Enough now, that's, true enough, that's true enough. There's some people just... But you know, I think the only reason, because I never would have thought of going to no prison. I never would have even, you couldn't have told me that 40 years ago that I'll be walking inside of a prison and different prisons all over, but because my husband was an ex-convict and he was the first, per, first person I, that I led to the Lord was him and I think that that I believe that has something to do with me becoming entwined with that because that was not me going inside of a prison. Okay, if I'm married, they still wouldn't come to Well, you know, based on everything, based on everything that, that we've said, Pastor, when you said uh, a minute ago about, uh, about the, the different things we do, mm -hmm. the Bible reminds us that we're going to, our works are going to be judged. Mm -hmm. Whether they're wood or straight, straight hay or stubble, we're going to, based upon what we do, for the, for the Lord, it's going to be judged in the end. But as far as going into the prison, you know, Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, but the labor is a few. Right. And when I look at that scripture, I think about this. There's only so many people who God is calling into the prison because mm -hmm. their heart is not for the prison. But there are some things that you may do for somebody on the street. Oh, hospitals, a lot of hospitals. That, that, I, that mm -hmm. my heart is not there. Yeah, mm -hmm. So I believe that this harvest has has our name on That's it. That's what I'm saying. I, and, and we're going to do what you. God is calling us to what I said. if we submit to God. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, we read what I said, Pastor. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's it. Amen. But the grace that God gives you. I mean, you know what God gives yeah, me? No people ask me, how do you go into a prison? Well, you know they're going to slam that door oh, you behind are, you. They have keys, mm -hmm. and they have a sign up there that our plan will not be altered for your life. If you're taken hostage, there's no thing that's going to be changed for your life. You read that going into prison. <laughs> oh, what? But yet, you still go down that hallway with all these men. We're inside. We're not in a little room on the corner. We're inside the prison with all these guys. You have nowhere to run if you under attack. You really have to, but God gives every, every lesson a call for this or that. You have to have that call, I mean, that grace for that. You have to have that grace sufficiency that God will give you for that, whatever, whatever he calls you to. Because it got to take grace for me to allow, you know, there's a guy back in the back room in the house 
for me to go to bed and sleep in peace. I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. Because you I know? got in the prison. I, I, started, I started doing prison ministry. And when one of those guys come up there, there's a shutdown. You ain't going nowhere. Yeah, you know, I ain't in there. I ain't in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. no. I, I started off there, but that wasn't my ministry. Well, y'all, I'm, right? I'm going to say, there are just so many different places that God can have us, can use you. You know, like in the hospitals, I, you know, I've been in the hospitals, you know, but I, I look at some of the different things in the hospital, I'm like, okay, Lord, is this where you want me to be? I've been to the prison, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the prisons too. Is this where you want me to be? Or do you want me to be at the school with the kids? Because that's a need too. Yeah. Do you want me to be there to, to pray and help with those kids? Mm-hmm. There's always a need. There's always yeah. something that God can use you for. Exactly. You know, so that, that's kind of what you all were saying too. Exactly. You know, but it's but we got to pray right. and ask God to reveal it. Show us yeah. what, well, what well, is what you would have us to exactly. do. You know. This is good. I'm so excited. But look, Pastor. One more thing too. When we go when you go talking about the hospital, you can have somebody who's a prison bound person in the hospital. They can be doing all kind of chaotic, wild things. That don't bother me. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, they send me because I'm on that team, the Burr team. You know, de-escalate. But it's in a hospital setting. My mind is set that they're sick mentally, the whole bit. But it's different from the prison system. Okay, but the, you know the UTMB uh, hospital over there, sir? We were chopping volunteers over there, so we ministered on the level, also not just in the prison, but over at the Galveston Hospital when you're still on lock, mm-hmm. but you got these inmates that sick mm-hmm. or something like that. So that was uh, our mm-hmm. over. Amen. Amen. So that's what I'm talking about. I worked at UTMB. Yeah. And we got some of the prisoners, but it was different from being in the prison yeah. versus in the hospital. But maybe that's why I know in the hospital. Well, y'all, I thank God for this Bible study. I know the men, we have to rehearse. We have to practice uh, right after Bible study tonight. But um, I do want to just continue to pray because there's some in here that may be going through something. And uh, in the spirit, the Lord is revealing that somebody in here needs some prayer. Mm-hmm. It could be sickness. It could be financial issue. It could be something else. And so I want you all to get your spiritual antennas up and Pray for that thing that needs to be prayed for. Amen. 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 So at this time, we're going to go ahead and stand up. And whichever way the Lord is leading you to pray, or whatever it is, then that's what we're going to pray for. Amen. I'll start it off, and if anybody else wants to do it, and uh, does anyone, do you want to? Oh, okay. If anyone wants to come up and, and uh, uh, Get prayed for uh, all if we need anointing all, and I'm gonna have the prayer prayer warriors to to uh, we're gonna we're gonna pray we're gonna pray we're gonna come together and pray for whatever that that need is. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 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 Amen. I would ask that the prayer warriors would come on up. Prayer warriors, if you would just come over and just, um, we're going to lay hands and we're going to pray. Whatever the issue is. Amen. Amen. Spirit is moving. Holy Spirit is moving right now. Father in heaven, Father God, we know that you always hear and answer prayer. Right now, we just want to say thank you for your many, many blessings, Father God, that you bestowed on us, Father God. We ask that you would cleanse, purify us, Father God. Anything that we've done wrong, Father God, we ask that you forgive us, Master. Now, Father God, we're praying right now for my sister who's come up here, Master, and uh, whatever the need may be, Father God, whether it's sickness, whether it's uh, relationship issues, whether it's family issues, whether it's finances or whatever it may be, Master, Father God, we know that you hear and answer prayer. Father God, thank you. Through the Bible study, we got the understanding, Father God. Even through Elijah and all he went through, you heard and you answered his prayer. But right now, we are praying right now for my cousin Yolanda, Father God, that you would continue to bless her, Father God. Father God, whatever the issues may be, whatever the pressures may be, Father God, we are praying right now that you release peace. Release peace on her, Father God. Release healing on her right now, Master. Father God, financial blessings, Father God, breakthroughs, Father, deliverance, Father, whatever it may be, Father God, we are praying right now. And we're thanking you in advance for what you're doing, 
what you have done and what you're about to do, Father God. We just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' precious name. And dear Lord, I want to say thank you, Lord God, for being God all by yourself. Yes, Lord. Lord God, I want to thank you for being creator. Yes, Lord, Lord, I want to thank you for Jesus. Yes. Lord God, I want to say to you, Lord God, you are worthy, Lord God. Yes, you are Lord. worthy of our praise, Lord. Yes, and I Lord. thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done. Yes, Lord. Now, my prayer, Lord God, for your sister, Lord, for yes. your daughters, is that, Lord, that she be reminded, Lord, of all the love. Yes, Lord. That you have bestowed upon her. Yes. And all the love that you have shown her through your son. Yes. That she is loved. Yes. That you are nothing but love and compassion. Yes, Lord. And all she needs, she can find it through you. Yes, Lord. I come thanking you, Lord God, that she will receive that, Lord. Lord God, if there's anything else she needs, Lord, remind her, Lord God, what you have said to her, Lord God. Yes, Lord. That she needs to trust and believe, Lord. Yes. And find comfort in you, Lord. Yes. And when she's weak and weary, Lord God, she can call upon you, Lord God. Yes. And also, Lord God, remind her, Lord God, that we are here for her, Lord. Yes. With a compassion ear, Lord. With a heart open to hear her, 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 her concerns, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord God, we need her, Lord God. Yes, And let her know that we need her. But Lord yes. God, my prayer, Lord God, is she knows, Lord God, that you are love. Yes, Lord. You are all the love that she needs, Lord. Yes, And you are pure love. Yes, And we thank you, Lord God, for how she's about to receive that love from yes, you Lord. at thank this very you, moment in this time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh God, I thank you, Father God, right now, Father God. I thank you for being God all by yourself, Father God. I thank you for your son shed blood at Calvary, Father God. I bless your holy name, Father God. Father God, right now I pray for strength for my sister, Father God. Father God, that she would she would run and she would not faint, Father God. That she would not be weary in well doing. Yes, Lord. But in due season you are weep if you just hold on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Father God. I just thank you for it right now, Father God, that you would enlighten her, her, her eyes and her memory, Father God. Yes, Lord. That you would open up knowledge to her, Father God, that she walk and continue to walk yes, and not be Lord. weary in well doing. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to I want you to I want you to ask God for something. Yes. In the book of James, mm -hmm. yes, he said, if any man, woman like wisdom, mm -hmm. let him ask of him. I can't pray for you to get wisdom. I can't do that. Yeah. But you can ask him yes. for it. So I want you to do right now. I want you to ask God to give you wisdom so Amen. you can make better decisions. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes. Because if you make better decisions, you change the outcome of a lot of areas in your life. Yes. A lot of things around your life yes, can be overcome and they can be healed by your greater wisdom. Yes. I want you to ask God for wisdom right now. Thank you, Lord. Give me wisdom. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Yes. Wisdom, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Wisdom. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Better decision. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Thank you for giving me much wisdom. Thank you, Lord. Peace. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I want you to ask I want you to ask him boldly. Yes. I want you to speak up and this is what you need to do even in your everyday life. Yes. Is be bold about what you've not been bold about. Yes. And that's what you need to start doing. Practice in the mirror. You may not have but you can practice in the mirror and begin to begin get bold and strong in that area. Mm -hmm. So a lot of situations that you have, you can fix them. You don't even need to call on God to do it. We can fix a lot of things around us. We just got to do something different. So that's why wisdom is going to come in. Okay. And it's going to give you a great advantage. Yes, that's what Solomon asked God for. Mm -hmm. He said, ask for whatever you want. And Solomon asked for wisdom yeah. to make better to make a decision right for the people. Mm -hmm. So, And that's where you need to begin with, your, with wisdom from God. And I'm telling you, he'll give it to you. Yes. So I want you to say that again. Oh, God. I want you to say, God. God Give me wisdom and yes. knowledge, Lord Jesus. Absolutely. Yes, and Lord. peace, Lord Jesus. Yes. That's right. Yes, Lord. Yes. Peace and knowledge. 
Jesus. Yes, Lord. Have mercy, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want what you want from me, Lord. Absolutely. Yes. For you made me I touch and agree. Yes, we touch Lord. and agree with you. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus. I want what you want from me, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. And bring me closer to you, Lord. Yes, yes Lord. Yes. Tell yes. me not be confined to this world. But yes. Body from this world. Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. I care about where I'll go when I leave. This Hallelujah. Place, Lord. Lord Jesus. Thank, Lord. thank you for wisdom and knowledge thank and peace and love. Thank yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the love thank that's around us, around me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the the, the, the blessings of, of prosperity. That Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, the thank things you. that have been taken from me. Lord. Yes, yes. yes. Hallelujah. Thank you for restoring. Yes, Lord. yes. Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Yes, Lord. Thank yes, you. yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Peace, protection. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Everything thank the you. enemy has taken. Yes, Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Hallelujah. You. Thank In you. Jesus' thank mighty name. Thank you. Thank you, for thank you Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. God said He's going to restore thank what the canker worm had taken from you over the years. He's taken a little bit at a time. You just never missed a lot of it. You can, you know, you go to the bed, you ever left? You drink at the table, but you don't notice it a little bit gone. Yes. You go somewhere else and a little bit more, and you don't even realize it's gone. Right. When you look around, you at the bottom, you don't have much of nothing left. Right. He's going to restore what the canker worm that took from you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Jesus Every name. day you get up to God, I thank you for restoring Amen. what the canker worm had taken thank from me. Okay. In yes. Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. 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 Father God, we just want to honor you right now with uh, mm -hmm. praises and glory mm -hmm. yes, because it all belongs to you. Yes, it does. Father, I thank you for this time that you've allowed thank us to you. come together you, to go deep into your word. And we thank you for the revelation that you've given us. Yes. Father, we're departing from here going separate thank ways. And yes, Lord. And just go before us, Lord God, and make every ro crooked road straight. Yes, yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for your love. We thank you for what you've given us. And so, but most of all, Father, we just thank you for the opportunity yes. to have come together and to have done what we've done. Yes, yes Knowing, Lord. Father God, that you are, your presence has been here. Yes. So may you yes. watch over our families yes. tonight yes. while they sleep, Father God. And may the yes. love that you've shared abroad in our hearts, yes. may we share it with others as we come in contact with them. Yes, And may Lord. we be the greater witnesses to those that are all around yes. us, Father God, Amen. so that may, they may see who's on the inside of us and want what we have, Lord yes. God. Yes. And we give you the glory and honor and the praises for what you've done tonight in our lives. Yes. In Jesus' yes. mighty name. Yes. And Father, I pray for the, the school and for the kids and for the, yes. the administrators, the teachers. Yes. I pray that you have your hand upon uh, Pastor Bolden yes. and, and everyone else that that knows you, Father God, yes. so that they be the bright light within a dark yes, world. Yes, Lord. And so yes. that they will change lives it, uh, yes. each and every day, Lord God. Yes. And so, Father, I just thank you for the peace that you're going to give yes. Pastor Bolden and the peace that you've given us. Yes. In Jesus' yes. mighty name, amen. 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 Father God, thank you for the offering that we received also. Amen. I thank you, Father, for baby, you for the manner in which you give. We thank you for all the prayers that went up tonight, Father God, and it's sealed in heaven, Father. We thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Terry. Thank you. Thank you.